Hello, everyone, and welcome to New Consciousness Review. I'm Miriam Knight, and our guest today is Dr. Eric Pearl. He's the author of the internationally best-selling book, The Reconnection, Heal Yourself, Heal Others. It's actually the other way around. Heal others, heal yourself. <laughs> Dr. Pearl has been featured on the Dr. Oz Show, on the New York Times, on CNN. He's presented at leading venues like the United Nations and to a packed house at Madison Square Garden. Now, today we're going to discuss his new book called Solomon Speaks on Reconnecting Your Life. He co-authored it with Frederick Ponslov. And in there lies a tale. So welcome, Eric. I'm so delighted you could join us. I'm so glad I could be here. Eric, you were running a successful chiropractic practice in Los Angeles when a series of amazing healings from cancers, epilepsy, cerebral palsy, and other health conditions started happening simply when you held your hands near the patients. Now, at the same time, one of your patients, Frederick Ponslov, began delivering coherent messages explaining the healings. Now, tell us what that was all like, and how did you deal with it? Well, what had happened was, I mean, it was already odd enough with the healings. I was waving, holding my hands near people, and they could feel where my hands were, their bodies were going into involuntary movements, their fingers and feet moving, eyes would rapidly dart back and forth. They were seeing colors they'd never seen before and smelling fragrances of flowers they had never smelled before, and they started reporting healings at the time, real, real healings. They were getting up out of wheelchairs, vision and hearing returning, children with cerebral palsy or epilepsy were able to walk and run and play and uh, not need medications, um, not have seizures. Their their par- parents would call, the, the patients would call, their doctors would call to say, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything, I don't tell anyone. And, of course, the more I said that, the more everyone started coming in asking to have the same thing. Uh-huh. And um, it wasn't long after that where people started asking me to, to teach this, and I, of course, didn't think that it was at all teachable, and I tried not to, but we've discovered in the process that we can teach this. And right now I spend a good 45 weeks, 40 to 45 weeks a year traveling the world teaching this in full weekend seminars where I've I've pretty much trained close to 100,000 people so far around the world. My goodness. Um, And the the book written on it is called The Reconnection. As you said, The Reconnection, Heal Others, Heal Yourself. It's in somewhere between 36 and 39 languages possibly right now. And, you know, I thought that that was certainly enough strange, interesting, unexpected stuff to function in someone's life to keep me occupied for a lifetime. Howsoever, Fred Ponslav decided to add a little twist to it. So a few months into this beginning, uh, Fred came in for a chiropractic visit. He had already been a chiropractic patient, so he was, you know, there was nothing seemingly unusual about him or his visits. I adjusted him just as I adjust all of my patients, and I would tell him to close his eyes and relax, and he did, and I held my hands near him, started feeling the healing sensations, and as that happened, I saw that his head suddenly jerked back, his eyes rolled to the back of his skull, his mouth opened, his tongue started to move, air appeared to be audibly escaping his mouth, uh, his tongue moving in a fashion that was clearly forming vowels, and um, the air sound sort of condensed itself into mm. a voice. And the voice said, we are here to tell you to continue doing what you were doing. What you were doing is bringing light and information onto the planet. Mm-hmm. Now, when after that happened, Fred kind of jumped up off of the the chiropractic table blocked the wall phone, the phone on the wall, because he thought I was going to call a mental hospital and have him taken away. (laughs) And he explained that he had had a sense of that voice trying to come through him for uh, some time in his life. And this time it sort of escaped and came up. And I thought, all right, this is something unique and interesting, but unique to Fred. Just unique to Fred Ponfoss. Fine. But... Two days later, three other patients 
head jerked, eyes rolled, mouth open, tongue moved, air came out, the air condensed itself into a voice. And the voice said the same two phrases that Fred said. We are here to tell you to continue doing what you were doing. What you were doing is bringing light and information onto the planet. And then two of them added, what you were doing is reconnecting strings. One of them said, what you were doing is reconnecting strands. I spoke with Fred, who later that week found that he was out of doing some automatic writing without knowing it, and he wrote, what you are doing is reconnecting strings. A few days later, five other patients had the same experience. Search soon into it, a fifth and sixth phrase were added. All together, there were six phrases spoken verbatim by over 50, five zero, 50 different patients of mine over a three-month period of time. And then it stopped. Mm. Now, it stopped coming through every single person except Fred. It was as if there was some intelligence somewhere in the universe that felt it important enough to reach through the illusion of the fabric of space and time and turn over 50 different people into living broadcast systems so that I would pay attention and not chalk it up to, you know, one crazy patient or something. Mm -hmm. And then it stopped coming through everyone by the time that I sort of, you know, we'd, I got it, that it was something to pay attention to mm -hmm. and continued coming through Fred. And so I would periodically, I would periodically meet with Fred and say, let's talk with that voice. And I would record these sessions with him. And how long and, ago was this? Well, this started in 94 with Fred. The healing started in 93. Fred's channeling began in 94. Mm -hmm. And so as that was happening there, I started um, recording these sessions that I would have with Fred. And thank goodness I did, because uh, we eventually amassed quite a library of information. I had the sessions transcribed, and we put them into the book that we call Solomon Speaks on Reconnecting Your Life. It's an exquisite prose that takes us into exploring and discovering ourselves, the depths of who and what we are, and as we can access these depths, as we can unveil our soul, not just to ourselves, but to others, then we bring about and facilitate a greater level of healing for the people with whom we interact. Mm -hmm. now, I, thought it, I thought it was really interesting that the... Uh, the chapters at the beginning of the book seemed to be speaking very personally to you. They were like guiding you through this process and reassuring you and, and kind of giving you ongoing lessons. And then as you get later in the book, it seems to be speaking. Uh, and and I, I would also add that the messages I think would be applicable to anybody in the healing or connecting professions. And then later in the book, it seems to be speaking directly to the reader as well. W was that... Well, it's actually speaking directly to the reader from the beginning, and this is part of what I explain. When these channelings or this information started coming through, it was speaking directly to me, specifically to me, not to me, Eric Pearl, the human being, to me, Eric Pearl, who was here to bring a new level of consciousness, you could say, into the world of healing, and to bring a new level of healing onto the planet howsoever. That was only me for one pinpoint second. Once people began to interact with this, they became changed. Actually, studies have shown your very DNA becomes changed once you interact with the reconnective healing frequencies. And it became their potential to accept the responsibility of bringing this consciousness forward onto the planet, just as I was doing. So as the reader, 
you need to hear these words speaking to you. This is very, this is universal information, but that doesn't mean general. It means specific, specific to you who are reading this. This is being spoken to you at the same time that it was being spoken to me, and it's for each of us to find the resonance of this truth within us. If you want, I'll, I'll share a little segment of it and see how it feels. Sure. Okay. Your heart is coming here to understand a deeper sense of your truth. You need to recognize that your heart is in the space that is allowing you to illustrate your greater being. Your feelings are now are being carried through on a different plane, and your energy exists in this sphere of influence that is central to your understanding of a different sphere of influence. Now, even if we just go that far, we need to hear ourselves in this. When they say your heart is coming here to understand a deeper sense of your truth, this is not a message that applies only to me. This is a message that applies to each of us. You need to recognize that your heart is in the space that is allowing you to illustrate your greater being. We have to hear these words speaking to us. There's a lot that needs to be said in various ways. We need to understand ourselves in a limited fashion. And we need to carry this limited understanding as a life process. And what they're speaking about is, is the feeling that we are each separate, that we are distinct, that we are of different personalities, that we are individuals instead of recognizing the oneness and the unity that we are. Because our lesson here is to come in feeling as if we are separate and distinct individuals and to grow through seeking and learning and therefore discovering that we are all one. Mm -hmm. so we understand ourselves in a limited fashion, and we need to carry this understanding as a life process. It is the unveiling of a multifaceted force within our life. We need to peel away the exterior so that that internal being shines through to those we come in contact with. This eternal soul that resides within our framework is being covered up in many ways by our apprehensions, our fears. And in your work, and notice it doesn't say what that work is. It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean in your work as a healer, anything more than it could mean in your work on yourself to become a greater person. Mm 